With Premananda Prabhu, there's, you know, being my first mentor in the Mat, first, like, guide, and, you know, he was like the one who took care of the new generation of people coming in, and how to do seva, how to cook, how to clean, how to do archan. So, um, I was in this state where I, you know, I was giving everything. Other, other devotees were, you know, like, oh, okay, we give, get some donation, I give some donation to Gurudev and I keep some. But I didn't have that mood. I was like, if I have this mood, then, you know, like Raghunath Das Goswami feeding Mahaprabhu, where we hear, hear all these katas, then we'll become attached or something like that. So I was like, whatever the Lord wants, I'm giving everything. I don't know. Gurudev is my protector. He's my maintainer. He's my everything. That Sharanagati mood was... So I was just in doing seva role, but I didn't realize that my I was getting very anemic. And uh, I was just getting very pale, and I wasn't really taking care of myself. <clears throat> but I was chanting, and I was doing seva, I was doing so much, you know. So, one day I was, you know, with the boys at lunchtime in the middle of summer, you know, it's like July, <laughs> June, July, and we're cooking, I'm cooking next to a big fire, you know, ten rotis at a time, flipping rotis. And I didn't usually flip rotis, you know. My saver was usually like, okay, I should roll rotis and pass it. But, you know, I was like, today I want to flip rotis. <laughs> you know, so I'm sitting on this little choki of flipping rotis just before lunchtime. And uh, I stood up and I just, just stretched my back, you know. And uh, I closed my eyes to stretch my back and when I opened my eyes, I was not where I was before. I felt something different. I felt something different, like, but I couldn't see anybody. And I was, but you know, and the mutt looked like golden, you know, it looked, everything kind of changed. It looked similar, but it looked kind of surreal. So I was in this surreal space going, what's going on? And then I started to go, am I dead? And then I started to try and hear with my ears. I closed my eyes again to try and hear what, what's going on. And then I, I realized maybe I'm dead. Maybe I've died. And I don't know that I've died. So then I tried to see my body and who was around and I couldn't see anybody. <laughs> and I started to like panic a little bit. <laughs> and then I tried to hear again. Then I started hearing people I, I remember hearing a sound like doom, like ding, and people scurrying around and I opened my eyes again and I couldn't hear anything. And I was like, maybe I'm dead. I can't see anybody. So I was, I was kind of like, okay, if I'm dead, then I should chant my mantra and just leave. You know? I was a bit like, whoa, you know, it was like, what's going on? I've never experienced this before. I can't see anybody. And yet I can see. Anyway, I started chanting my mantras in my heart. And, you know, the kitchen's in the corner of Mathura Mat, Keshav Jagodi Mat. And on the other side, there's this little hallway, a little alleyway that goes to the bathrooms and the back staircase, you know, that kind of half back staircase that goes to the roof. And uh, all of a sudden, this golden aura just started emanating from that side of the building. It was a different, it was almost like a different building, but similar structure. And I started, I saw this golden effulgence just emanating from that side of the walkway. And then I, was, I sort of, it was kind of very surreal because there was cloth, red, reddish cloth like the kumkum here. And it was kind of like, moving around like it was alive and there was a golden a golden being beautiful golden being that I, I couldn't really see because the effulgence was so bright but it was so beautiful and it came moving towards me and then kind of went towards my feet or bent down and so I looked down and I saw my body lying on the ground as if dead 
And I was like astonished. I was like, what is going on? And then this being, I couldn't see completely like, you know, it was like an energy. It was like a, something higher than my own energy, but it was beautiful. And, and, uh, and then all of a sudden I was back in my body. And Premananda Prabhu was chanting the Shringa Mantra and some other mantras into my ear, kissing my ear, you know. And then I woke up. So I had like this glimpse, I, I don't know what it was like, I had a, a kind of a glimpse of some spiritual form, but I couldn't see it clearly. But it saved me. It saved me, <laughs> like kind of mood, you know. Like I'd fallen out of my body somehow. Or my, my body, you know, like I'd fallen out of my body and my body, I didn't even know. And I was in some subtle realm. Anyway, after this experience, I woke up, I had a like, burn on my face and on my arms. And, and uh, someone had pulled me off. Gorsundar had pulled me off the hot plate. You know, it was like, this, and I was lying on the side next to the tap and Prabhuji was speaking mantra into my ear. So anyway, Later that day, Gurudev called me up and he's like, oh, I heard what happened. And he had this kind of mysterious smile on his face, with a mysterious smile, but with some like fatherly concern. And this is where it kind of started this particular mood with Gurudev, with me, that he started calling me like his son. So before that, he, he would say something like that, but then he started really calling me like, you're my son like this. And it's like, he told me at that particular time after he said, this body is not yours. I want you to take care of this body as if it is mine. You should not think my, this is my body. You should think this body is mine. And after that there was this series of events where he was uh, another time he and so you know he also gave me some money to go get some medicine so I wasn't so anemic and you know, homeopathics and stuff like that and he told me I should keep some money if I need for my health and don't give everything don't be like Prahlad Maharaj you don't have this qualification this body's mine take care of it like it is me so I was like whoa this was a this was a big thing for me you know because it was like the opposite of what I was thinking in one way. I was going, yes, this, I'm Gurudev, so I'm yours, please guide me. But he was saying, no, treat your body like it is mine, like it is, belongs to him. And then there was a series of events that kind of gradually built up from there where he, uh, he told me another, another time on Guru Purnima, he said, you know, your old birthday of your body is no longer your birthday. He said, your birthday is on my birthday now, on Guru Purnima. So he was, he was like that, he was giving me this energy like, or sharing what I believed was like a, a spiritual identity with him. In, the, in a more like a, like a stepping stone toward really feeling uh, that, that family mood, you know. There was always this kind of separate endeavor, like we're all separate individuals and we're all endeavoring in a separate capacity and, and we've got to try and prove ourselves to Gurudev and this. And there was this kind of subtle line of Sharanagati that I didn't really get yet. And he was indicating that to me. And also as a Brahmachari, it's like now you are a Brahmachari with me and it's like, you know, you observe your birthday and my birthday, which is Guru Purnima.